Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with Shutterstock. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a deep dive in how to create the miniature look using a drone. And some of you might already be saying, Charles, the miniature look's overdone, it's just a Gaussian blur with a mask. But we're not gonna do it that way. Not anymore. All right guys, so the big difference between how we're gonna approach the miniature look versus something like an Instagram filter or a preset effect is we're gonna create kind of a stop motion effect on our footage, which is gonna help sell that miniature look and feel. And we're also gonna try and match some visual elements of actual miniature scale scenes, such as the lighting angles and proper bokeh fall off. It sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. I mean, there are quite a few steps involved. It's more complicated than a drag and drop effect, but it's gonna look way better. All right, before we get started, as I mentioned, we're gonna be filming with a drone. But if you don't have a drone, or maybe you're just interested in the post-production aspect of the tutorial, you can download the project file from the Shutterstock blog. I've included some drone footage with the project file you can use. So check for that link in the description of this video. All right, let's get started with the filmmaking steps to create our miniature scene. And the first step is gonna to be to film on a sunny day. And this is so everything in your scene will cast a shadow. And it might even be better to film in the late morning or early evening when there's a little bit longer shadows on everything. These shadows kind of mimic the harsh lighting of actual miniature models. Next, I recommend flying your drone to height between 100 and 200 feet. Obviously, this is subjective, but that was the height that I kind of found worked best for my shots. If you fly too close to your subject, you'll start to notice kind of the movement of the drone, and that'll be more noticeable when the footage is sped up and we're gonna look at that more a little bit later. Next, have your drone camera facing down at a 45 degree angle. I found that's a nice starting point. You can kind of imagine if you're looking down at a tabletop with a miniature scene, you're gonna kind of be looking down at a 45 degree angle. If your drone has tripod mode, I recommend turning that on once you get your drone into position. Tripod mode is a mode with DJI drones that'll kind of help limit the movement of the drone or try to keep it kind of set in place. If it does start to move, it'll move at a much slower rate. Now this is optional, but if your drone does have the ability, I recommend zooming in a little bit or maybe filming in a cropped field of view mode. This is because with a slight zoom, you're narrowing that field of view from the lens and it's gonna kind of mimic what a macro lens would look like if you're filming an actual miniature scene. Now if your drone doesn't have the ability to zoom in, no worries, I actually didn't either with the drone that I used to film my shots. Just make sure you film in 4K. And then we can actually zoom in in post, which will also narrow our field of view. Next, and this is really important for the stop motion look, film with a fast shutter speed. So make sure you leave the ND filters off of your drone and crank that shutter speed up to 500 or 600 plus. This is because we don't want any motion blur on our footage. And later it'll help give our footage the look as if we're moving everything frame by frame. Finally, hit record and let the drone film in place for one to two minutes. And that's because we're gonna speed up the footage by about 10 times in post. So a one minute clip will turn into about six seconds. So make sure you film long clips unless you want your video to be super short. Dare I say, miniature. All right, now let's get started creating the miniature look in After Effects. First, add your footage into a 1080p composition. Since our original footage is 4K, you can crop in on it and reframe it if you want to. Again, this can help narrow the field of view a bit and kind of mimic a macro lens. Now at this point, if you want, you can stabilize your footage. I'm actually not gonna do that because I kind of prefer that more imperfect movement on the footage. I think it kind of matches more with the stop motion look we're going for. Next, right click on your footage and navigate to time and then time stretch. We're gonna set the stretch factor to 10 and then click okay. Now you can go ahead and shorten your comp length if you want. I'm gonna right click on the work area and select trim comp to work area. Now let's right click on our footage and select pre-compose. I'll name it footage and select move all attributes into a new comp and then select okay. To complete the stop motion look on our footage, we need to lower the frame rate of our composition. So just right click outside of your footage and select composition settings. Then set the frame rate to 12 and click okay. Now if we preview our footage, it's gonna have a fast and stutter feel to it. The speed helps sell the feel that everything is mini and the low frame rate kind of helps sell the feel that everything's moving frame by frame. This is also why it was important for us to film at a fast shutter speed. Next, let's juice up the color, create an adjustment layer, and then apply the Lumetri color effect. 
Under basic correction, I'm gonna set the contrast to 40 and the saturation to 140. This will help give everything more of an unreal plastic painted look. Something else that I like to do is add an unsharp mask effect. Set the radius value to three. This again just sharpens up some detail, but I really like how it emphasizes things like reflections in the scene. Again, helping mimic a glossy painted surface. Next, we need to add our blur effect, but instead of using a mask with our blur, we're gonna use a gradient ramp. This will give us much more realistic blur fall off and things like bokeh. First, we need to create a new solid Make it comp size and then click OK. Then right click on the solid and navigate to layer styles, then to gradient overlay. Then under the gradient overlay settings, change the style to be reflected. Think of the bright white area as the part of our footage that's gonna be in focus and the black area is gonna be out of focus. Under the colors setting, you can adjust how harsh you want the fall off to be by adjusting the bottom black and white sliders. I'm gonna bring them both in a little bit. You can also adjust the angle of the gradient or the position if you need to move it around to line it up better with your footage. Once you have your gradient set up, go ahead and right click on that solid layer and pre-compose it. I'm gonna name it Ramp, then make sure you move all attributes into that new composition and go ahead and click OK. And then we can turn off the comp visibility by clicking on the eye icon. Now we need to add our blur, create a new adjustment layer above everything else, and apply the effect camera lens blur. Now just a heads up, camera lens blur is gonna render much slower than the other blurs that are in After Effects, and that's kind of the cost for a more realistic looking lens blur and bokeh, and it's also gonna allow us to use our gradient ramp as a blur map. Set the blur radius to something like 20. Then also check on to repeat edge pixels. Under blur map for the layer, go ahead and select the ramp comp that we created. And then check on to invert the blur map. Now we can really see our miniature scene take shape. And you can continue to adjust settings like the blur radius or adjust the iris shape, which will change how the bokeh looks. Also like the subtle look that you get when you increase the diffraction fringe. Now one final thing I recommend doing is adding some film grain on top of your footage. The grain will accent nicely with a blurry background and it just adds a bit more realism to the bokeh. And luckily Shutterstock has some really nice film grain overlays you can download for free. I'll link to those on the blog post. Just drag and drop in the film grain footage and set the blending mode to overlay. And that completes our miniature scene. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you check out the other tutorials we have on the Shutterstock channel. Again, I'm Charles Jaeger. I'll catch you guys on the next one.